I went over the rules earlier in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands. Tech stuff's all times. Understood? Touch him up. Best One of luck. Question. Can you mark to me? It's where right there's his belly button. Low blows right, right there. The yeah, his okay. belly button's right underneath there. If not for Good their last the fights old. where they both lost, this would be for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world. As it is, we're going to settle for maybe the heavyweight championship of action fights. And a great move by Michael Katsidi's trainer, Brendan Smith. He obviously was watching the Juarez fight in the locker room. He wanted clarification from Lawrence Cole. Show me where the belt line is so we know full well what range we have. He saw the two points deducted from Barrios, and he doesn't want the same. Diaz, typically with a very high work rate, but CDs loves the power. But CDs told us, listen, it's all about me keeping my composure in the ring. In fact, he dared us to go outside and get a metal pole and hit him over the head. He said, it won't bother me, Nick. I just got to keep my composure. Let's see if he does it here in the backyard of hey, Diaz. Stop. Stop. Back. Watch those head on the inside, all right? Box. Both boxers are prone to cuts. So you may see a cut in this fight. But CD's a 2000 Olympian representing Australia in his native Sydney. Diaz had 110 amateur bouts of his own. Right hand by Katsidis, fell a little short. Diaz is throwing a good jab, but he needs to throw a double jab. That's always the mistake of young, young fighters, especially in the first round, they just throw one jab, one jab, and then when they go back to the corner, their trainer reminds them to throw two. Diaz turned pro at the age of 17, at the age of 16 in Mexico. He had three fights in Mexico before he could legally fight in the United States. This is the 228th round as a pro for a guy who won't turn 25 until September the 17th. He's got a lot of experience. Diaz is not a guy that's a huge banger. He stops people with volume, but even he admitted, he says, as I'm you know, maturing as a person, he said, I'm starting to feel stronger in the gym. It's just a natural maturation physically. And you know, the funny thing about that, he probably hasn't reached his full potential right now. Got CDs in a combination that gets blocked. Both fighters so far trying to fight disciplined, controlled fights. I have a feeling that the first time we see red, both of these guys are also going to see red, and uh, a real fight's going to break out. Step back. Step back. Right. Diaz tries to dig to the body after a combination to the head from Katsini. End of round number one. That's one. According to CompuBox, is Juan Diaz landed 17 of 56. The 28 jabs thrown by Katsidis in fights that CompuBox has tracked, the most he's ever thrown in a round. Seems to be a trend here with the guys fighting the kids from Houston. And he seemed basically relaxed. I'm talking Casitas, not as mad as he usually comes in the first round. Very controlled, and that's what he's been trying to work on with his trainer for uh, quite a while. Well, Brendan Smith, Katsidi's trainer, told him in the corner in between rounds just then, that's the Michael we know. Maybe. That's the Michael he knows. This is the Michael that we know. And the Diaz. That, that was one of those close first rounds, too, you know, where if they were fighting in Toowoomba, Australia, he might have gone to Katsidi's. And it looks like Katsidi's might have a cut on the left side of his face near the eye.
know, boxers that cut a lot and have been cut in past fights, usually the he healing doesn't really get to heal too fast. And they usually get cut in most of their fights. And, and both of Don't these move. fighters cut. He has got cut in his last fight against Campbell along the left eye. Diaz going to work. Look how it's Katsidis who, Diaz, a superior boxer, wants space. Katsidis wants to be in Diaz's chest. And Katsidis has quick feet. He makes sure to keep his head right in Diaz's chest when Diaz tries to get distance between them. Also, Katsidis is really using his body and trying to push Diaz back. And Diaz is doing the right thing by circling around. That's very good by Diaz. Not being forced back is, is a main thing because what Casillas wants to do is push him against the ropes. And Diaz did it again for you, Lennox. And Diaz has done some nice work on the inside. Already a very tough, bruising round. <laughs> Good combination by Diaz. Chops a right hand to that cut eye of Casillas. Oh, Diaz is doing a great thing by circling. He should circle the other way as well and mix it up. I guess so, if you're going to circle, you want to circle away from the guy's right hand. <laughs> Diaz doing a lot of good things, but he has less margin for error because he's not the puncher. The far better boxer. Cities pumps out a double jab. Diaz blocks that onslaught. Might be technical now, but you know it's going to open up. Let's take a look and see where we can see Casitas getting cut. Was it from that right hand on the inside there? See the blood oh. starting to flow right there. Could either be the right uppercut or maybe when he rubbed his face against Diaz's shoulder. That's bad yeah, news I if Katsidis cuts I, that easily. I think it was a shoulder move. Diaz outlanded Katsidis according to copy box 27 to 12. He was 24 of 60 on his power shots in that round. But you sort of get the feeling that but this is just the appetizer as to how this thing is going to eventually play out. Quite an appetizer so far. Casita is not being a steel target for Diaz, which is, which is good. Stop. Diaz shoots the left hand. Lennox, what would you like to see Katsidis do a little bit more? We saw Diaz do some nice things in round number two, circling away, creating better angles for himself. Well, Katsidis is doing the right thing, which is putting pressure on him. But he needs to be throwing, you know, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of the jab. But he's doing the right thing right now, and it's just difficult to do it against Diaz because Diaz is really complete. He's keeping his defense tight, and he's throwing some good punches. I don't think Katsidis can box with Diaz and win. I do think if it turns into a street fight, Katsidis has a good chance as the fight wears on. See, Diaz is doing something that Ronnie Shields' other fighter, Rocky Juarez, didn't do. He's filling the dead spots with combinations. Yes. And this is what you need to do. You need to control the action in the ring. Look at the ringers. This is my ring. This is my home, and you're in it. Cities with a hook to the body and then a hook to the head. He has pumps out the jab, but Cities answers with one jab of his own. Diaz doing a very nice job so far. We've seen when Katsidis bull rushes him, the kind of boxing in semicircles that Diaz promised before the fight. Both fire left hands. Katsidis shoots one to the belt line.
Diaz tried to load up with that right after the jab, shot it over the head of Tsitsidis. Dips through the shoulder. Rolling to the end of round number three, Juan Diaz boxing a very good fight against Michael Kitsidis. So we start round number four. Let's check in with an unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, one Diaz. Bob, I can tell you, I love that left jab. I mean, he's coming in with the powerful, stinging, hard left jab. He snaps it real well. In round two, one Diaz will step into the side. When he does that, he, real nails, he really nails Katsidis. That's what he calls giving him angles. He'll take a step to the side and a whack him with the right hand. In any case, Juan Diaz with that real good uppercut, great defense with his hands up by his elbows. In touch, three to nothing, 30 to 27. Harold, as we begin round number four, Katsidis again trying to dig in with his power shots. Diaz answers back with hooks to the body of his own. Lennox Max made the point earlier that Katsidis is not going to win a boxing match against Diaz. Does he have to sort of change the temperament of this fight right now? Yeah, I mean, I, I see he's changed his style of boxing in the sense that he's not going as mad. He's trying to take his time about it, but maybe that's not working for him. Maybe he has to go a bit more wilder. In fact, there was a little uppercut in there by Katsidis that caused some pause for Diaz. Let me tell you, Diaz's jab is giving Casitas a lot of problems. And this is how a, how a jab controls a fight. Once you throw it a lot, you know, the other man gets weary about it. He doesn't like it. And a jab can do a lot, a lot of different things as well. Triple only, left hand by Diaz. Not only set up a, a combination, but also cut a guy. You can use your jab to open up a cut or help make a cut that's open a bit worse. Diaz doing great work on the inside with his left hook and his right hand. Literally boxing circles around Katsidis right now. Diaz is the rare example of a fighter who can back up and pressure even world-class fighters in spite of the fact that he's not a puncher. Diaz's level of determination and volume of his punches has broken all the fighters that he stopped in the past. Katsidi scores his knockouts from his physically bruising style and the and the force of his punches. Diaz racking up some big numbers here in round number four against Michael Katsidi. As much as it's fun to watch, I'm not sure it's in Diaz's best interest to be so exciting in close quarters with Katsidi. He, what Diaz does as well, he blocks Casitas' jab, which is which is a great thing to do because he's not getting hit with no silly punches. Diaz playing great defense and then good inside offense through four. Okay, okay, now we watch. And here we see both boxers trading with some combination punches. It looks like Diaz is throwing some good uppercuts and getting the best of this. And Lex, he's done such a good job defensively of blocking things and then countering off it on the inside. Which is very important. This is what, you know, what Juarez was supposed to be doing. Juan Diaz. And Michael Gatsidis embark upon round number five, scheduled for 12. Diaz has had the early command here in the first four rounds of the fight. Katsidis has to try to find a way to shake up the apple cart a little bit. There's a combination by Katsidis. Speaking of shaking up, Katsidis looked like that left hook stunned him for a moment. Diaz basically keeping Katsidis defensive with the number of punches he's throwing. Katsidis is busy with Diaz's offense instead of his own, it seems to me. And Katsidis hasn't thrown one body shot yet. He's strictly a headhunter right now. When you look at D.
Diaz's midsection, which is always a little loose. When he was younger, people said it's a little baby fat. And it looks like an inviting target for Katsidis, who's a very good body puncher. Diaz goes to Katsidis' body. Good uppercut and then left hook by Diaz. He's getting a little over anxious there. Diaz continues to pump out that jab. Trying to shot the right hand instead. Left hook to the body was blocked. Right hook to the body scored. Diaz thus far has outclassed Katsidis, which is what many anticipated, you know, for the first half of the fight. And the funny thing, I was a bit concerned for Diaz, feeling that this fight was a bit early for him, but I think he picked well. This is a good fight for him. He's doing quite well in it. So far. So far. Well, he told us, hey, I'm a former champ. I need a fight that I'm going to be focused on. I could slip up in a tune-up. And right now, he's not slipping up against Michael Katsidis. He's slipping and scoring. And he says he loves to fight in, home, in his hometown because it really spurts him on and he, and he gets the energy from the crowd. You know, Diaz also doesn't look it, but he's physically strong. Strength doesn't always translate to punching power, but you can see at times Katsidis trying to push Diaz back and unable to do it. Swelling around the right eye and a cut on the right eye of Katsidis, along with that cut on the left eye. Okay, baby, look. Listen. All you gotta do, just keep working like you're working. All right? You see all the on the side, Joe? There's a little bit of cut right up here. Okay? Listen. Just keep working like that, okay? Every, everything is good. I got get in the water, get in the water. I got it. And I want that chin right there, and I want you to start to fire that jab for me, okay? Yep. Start to stiffen it on the button, all right? But be patient with it, because you don't want that right coming over the top of it. Make sure you use it at the right time, nice yep. and stiff, okay? Good, good, good. Watch out. Watch out. Well done, mate. Stay focused, stay focused. Very patient and relaxed Katsidi's corner. He's got several different cuts as we start round number six Katsidis told us that you don't happen to life life happens to you and therefore he doesn't have a plan set in stone for Diaz so far Diaz has happened to him and if he doesn't have a plan may I suggest being the madman that Lennox discussed earlier that might be a good idea to sort of shift this tide right now. Good combination by Diaz. A left cross and a right hand to the body. For all my talk of Diaz not having punching power, he is tw almost 25 years old now. He's entering his physical prime, and he seemed to shake Katsidis up with that right hand. And there Diaz is being first. This is what I'm talking about, being first. After the action, you come back and you be first with that jab. Yeah, Diaz uses that jab. Diaz's jab is straight and stiff. Seems like he's taking some of the aggression away from Katsidis. He's not throwing any punches. Katsidis is trying to work it out what to do because everything he's trying is getting blocked or is getting stopped or broken up with Diaz's left jab. Lennox, does he need to stop boxing and start fighting? Well, I, I, you know, whether he's, he's, he's a fighter and he's fighting against another fighter that 
can either box and fight. So I think Diaz is winning both right now. There's the first time we saw Katsidis not taking no for an answer when he tried to push Diaz back. Getting low, getting leverage, and really pulling Diaz back. Yet there Diaz is still in the middle of the ring, not against the ropes. Cidez flings it right to the body. And Katsidis who said that he noticed some give in Diaz against Nate Campbell in, in Diaz's loss and said there's no give in me. We'll see who really wants this. Looks like Diaz really wants it so far. No give in the baby bull right now. This fight against Nate Campbell turned sour in round number six. It's pretty sweet after six here against Katsidis. And here we see Diaz coming over with a right hand early in the round. And here's another, another right hand, which starts a flurry of punches by Diaz. In that round, according to CopyBox, he landed 16 of 31 power shots. That's 52% to Katsidi, 16%. Four of 25. Round number seven underway. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob, six to nothing, 60 to 54, one B is. Bob, I love those combinations. Three, four, five, six punch combinations by Juan Diaz. I mean, he just opens up and whacks this guy. Good defense by Juan Diaz. The hands are held high, elbows in tight. He picks off so much of what Ken Cedis is coming back with. Six to nothing, Juan Diaz. We're in Houston, Texas at the Toyota Center. Over 15,000 fans on hand. Bob Papa, Max Kellerman, Lennox Lewis, HBO's Boxing After Dark. Juan Diaz, the former lightweight champion, coming off his first professional loss, taking on Michael Katsidis, coming off his first professional loss. It's been all Diaz. Earlier tonight, Rocky Juarez stopped Jorge Barrios in the 11th round as he ripped open a vicious cut on Barrios's lip. It's been an emotionally charged night here in Houston with tremendous action. In the other matchmaker's dream kind of fight this year, Margarito Cotto. Cotto outclassed Margarito over the first half of the fight, but you got the sense that Mar it was a matter of time before Margarito caught up to him. If Katsidis to fight his way into this fight, he's going to have to do something like what Rocky Juarez did in the first fight where there was very little indication that Juarez could come back and win, but he was able to pull a rabbit out of a hat. Katsidis is gonna have to come up with something, something dramatic soon to change the course of this fight. Every time Diaz throws that left jab, all he's doing is messing up the face of Katsidis because he's getting hit right on it and he's, he's trying to go for the cut as well. Good uppercut. And Diaz has not forgotten about the body of Katsidis either. He's thrown a lot of left and right hooks to that body. Diaz blocks, Katsidis blocks. Diaz scores with a right hand. And there's that circling again by Diaz, getting away from the danger. Katsidis puts his punches together. It's the first time in a while he's thrown a combination of more than two punches. And you know that combination he threw was a right hook. There's nothing straight about that punch. Both of these men told us there'd be no excuses. Nothing about the last loss and training went well. That they're at their best tonight. Right now it's Diaz whose best is better than Katsidis. Hang on. Alex, let me ask you this question as we get set for the start of round number eight. Uh, Brendan Smith has done a wonderful job with Michael Katsidis, but it seems as if the temperament is, you're doing a great job here boxing, you're doing a nice job, 
does there need to be a little bit more urgency here? He's got a to lot realize this guy a is lot getting more beaten. urgency because he's not in his hometown. He's in Diaz's hometown, so he needs to do something pretty dramatic here, and he needs to light a fire under Casitas because right now he's not winning. He could it's be in his in his living room with his family watching. No one's scoring this fight for Casitas so far. And Casitas' face isn't looking too pretty right now because of the fact that Diaz's jab is getting to him. Well, Katsidis tried to summon Diaz to engage. Diaz will engage when he feels it's good and ready, and it's usually after a couple of good jabs. Katsidis has fight-changing power, so the question is for him, how is he going to land that punch? Diaz is blocking those shots upstairs very well. Like Juarez in the first fight, who used the body punches to turn the fight around, Brendan Smith in the corner would like to see Katsidis go to the body. In fact, the hardest shots to the head the ones that have seemed to shake the other guy up have been right hands from Diaz. Katsidis has four knockouts of his 20 after round six. But most of those came earlier in his career in fights in Australia. Diaz has five knockouts after round six. And Diaz is throwing a great jab. I love the way that the fact that he's persistent with that jab, and that's very important in this fight. You want to be persistent in this, in this fight because what he does when he throws that jab, he breaks up anything Casidas wants to throw. Casidas now making an, an effort to go to the body, concentrating on it more. Diaz has thrown 55 more jabs than Katsidis in the fight. He's landing at 29% with his jab, according to CompuBox. Katsidis at 14%. You see Diaz adept at blocking those body shots. That right hand got through for Katsidis. The thing about a puncher like Katsidis is even when you do block the body shots, if he hits you on the biceps, it can tire your arms out as the fight wears on. The great Rocky Marciano used to use that as a strategy. Leon Spinks did it against Muhammad Ali in their first fight. He actually targeted the bicep to make it harder for his opponent to punch. Diaz steps away. Scores a combination. End of round number eight. All right, baby, beautiful work. Going to copy box, Juan Diaz has landed 120 power shots to Katsidi's 65. You know, Diaz and his camp talked about coming into this fight, yeah, great in the hometown, but with a clear mind. They had some other distractions prior to that fight with Nate Campbell in Mexico back in March, promotional headaches, and they certainly seem to be more of a relaxed camp leading into this fight, and Diaz is fighting a relaxed fight. Although Diaz, you heard him in the corner go, whoof, after that round, and Ronnie Shields said, let's get a boxing round this round. I don't think it was coincidental that Katsidis was able to land some good shots upstairs that caused Ronnie Shields to say that after he concentrated on Diaz's body. I think the snap that Brendan Smith was referring to in the corner on Katsidi's punches is a result of those body shots that he was throwing earlier in the round. Stiff jab from Diaz after a body shot from Katsidi. Diaz fired the uppercut on the inside. The jab by Diaz. Time! Left Mitchell Porter, come here, Michael. Your glove. Stay right there. You got scissors? Cut this. A little loose tape on the glove of Michael oh, Katsidis. Which is dangerous because that could get into the boxer's eye. I can't get it. Jim Strickland will come up and Excellent. Give Thank you. Time in. Box. But CD's anxious to go. <laughs> CD's. Wow, with about 
had seven unanswered punches for the first time in the fight. And a left hook that land, up, landed upstairs with authority to cap that combination from Katsidis. He said he saw a little give in watching the tape against Nate Campbell. Lennox, do you think he senses a little give right now? Well, yes, because if you were watching a Nate Campbell fight, you would notice that Nate Campbell was electing to go to Diaz's body, and that affected him later on in the round, in the fight. And again, we see this round after Katsidis. You could see a concerted effort to go to Diaz's body. Now those punches that Diaz was blocking upstairs are starting to land. Well, the fans here in Houston feel the need to urge Diaz. Good uppercut on the inside, though, by Diaz. Katsidis comes right back. Left hand by Diaz. Casitas smothers himself when he throws his combination. He's coming into Diaz and he throws the combination. Then after that, he smothers himself. He's saying, Casitas, if you come in close to me, you can make, you're, I'm making you pay for it. And he's making him pay right now. Michael, Better work for Michael Casitas in that round. Casitas camp is going to be in for a shocking score if this thing goes to the scorecards. There's no Turn. way um, Casitas' corner one. believes, on, Brendan Smith no, believes no, what one. he's saying right in terms of the scorecards. It sounds like he's just trying to keep his fighter calm so and upbeat. Doctor says, let it go. Katsidis did throw 91 punches in the last round. By far, his highest output. Let's check in with Harold Letterman. Look at Bob. 89, 82, eight rounds to one, one Diaz. Bob, I'm amazed that Michael Katsidis just keeps coming, just keeps throwing punches, and his eyes are virtually closed. I mean, that right eye is bad, but it just doesn't stop the guy. The guy's got an amazing heart. Anyway, Juan Diaz just landing the clean the hardest shots. I thought Michael Katsidis pulled that round eight because in round eight, Juan Diaz did very, very little. But basically, Juan Diaz is out punching him in each and every round. And when he starts stepping to the side, he's really murdered. Anyway, eight to one, Diaz. Katsidis rips a hook to the body. Diaz tries to answer back. Diaz, you see, has enough punching power to keep Katsidis honest. And it's one of the reasons, not only his, you know, his corner imploring him to not go berserk, but I think that's another reason, is that Diaz hits just hard enough to make Katsidis think twice about just giving him the bums rush. Katsidis steps in with a one-two there. Diaz with an uppercut on the inside. That snapped back the head of Katsidis. I'm kind of surprised that Diaz not only has a great jab, but he's got a great uppercut, which has landed a few times in this fight. So if you're in close with Diaz, you got to watch out for his up uppercut and his body shots. If you're far away, you got to watch out for his right hand and his jab. Diaz blocked that hook to the body of Katsidis. Diaz has done a nice job defensively in this fight. Uh-oh. Looks like Casitas is getting close with that head in there. Stop, stop. Right there, it was four. Okay. Right. More Bucks. head than uppercut. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I, I haven't seen the hometown fighter in either fight tonight be warned once. But I've seen about ten warnings. But I will say this. In the Juarez fight, Barrios lost points. They haven't taken anything away from Katsidis. can live with the warnings as opposed to erroneous point deductions. Yes. Unless you're at the Olympics where they stop the fight forever. End of round number 10.
only is Diaz dominating the fight, but it's a mismatch of corner men. Ronnie Shields giving specific instructions that are relevant to what's going on. And the only explanation I have for what Brendan Smith is telling Katsidis in the corner is that Smith believes that in the natural course of events over the next two rounds, because it's later in the fight, if Katsidis remains calm, he's more likely to score a knockout. But that does not appear to be the case. No, because there's no wear and tear on Diaz. It's not as if he's been ripped up with big body shots and maybe he's fading. I mean, he outlanded Katsidis, according to Coffee Box, in the last round, 30 to 14. And he threw a representative 74 punch just to Katsidis, 94. He's never scored a knockout past the ninth round, has Katsidis. Neither has Diaz, for that matter. And Katsidis is a special fighter to watch because no matter how hopeless it looks for him, he's usually able to impose himself physically on his opponent and change the course of the fight that he's losing. Even Casamayor, who knocked him out, Katsidis did that to Casamayor and looked like he was going on, going to go on to win. Casamayor caught him and knocked him out. Here, he's just being systematically beaten by Juan Diaz. It would probably be in his best interest to try to do something dramatic. Loose tape on the glove. Sorry, Mike. No, no, it's wet. I understand. That's why we don't put other tape on it. I know. No worries. Hang on real quick, Michael. Time in. Well, that's, Box. You know, that's a legitimate concern. You got to make sure that tape isn't hanging there. Well, hey. you know, in that situation, it, it didn't seem like it was hanging off. It was just Stop a waste of time. time. You can see he's lost some tape from the back of his trunks, blacking out one of his sponsors. Diaz pumps that jab again. That has been one of the keys for him in this fight. He's landed 31% of his jabs in this fight. He's thrown 330 of them. Now, it's the one thing that's been interesting in this fight, neither guy has shown that what happened in their last fight took something out of him. No, that's why I was really surprised with Diaz because I would have, I would have, if I was his trainer, I would have said, you know, take a rest, you're still young, you know, work your way up. But he wanted to get right in there. He realized what he did wrong in his last fight with Nate, so he wanted, he wants to prove himself. Plus, he misses being the champion. And they're fighting like it. They both are right now. Diaz finished off that last exchange with a good left hook to the head. Right hand comes whistling in from Diaz. Diaz has done a nice job of blocking a lot of the power shot from Katsidis. We saw Diaz do it again. When Katsidis leans on him, he turns, and finds Katsidis, an angle and scores. Katsidis, his head is getting really close to Diaz. It looks They fight through the end of the bell after 11 here in Houston, Texas. We're in Katsidi's position right now heading into a last round of a fight like this. What would Emmanuel Stewart tell you? Emmanuel Stewart would say, go knock him out, go in there and give it your all. Don't stop punching stop. till you hear the bell ring. Okay, time. And you again. had options. You could box. <laughs> Katsidi's what he does best is try to knock his guy out. Uh, you know, I have all the respect for Brendan Keep it handy. Smith, Last but round. Yeah, well I don't know do what fight he's watching right now, especially where he is. There we go. We got three more minutes. Right there. In Juan Diaz's right, hometown. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Box. Now, Katsidis is coming out as if he feels like he needs to do something big, despite what his corner has told him. It's going to be surprising. I want to know if Casitas actually thinks he won a round. Well, the way he ended the round 11, he raised his hands in exultation as if he had walked through Diaz. This is yet another example of why you would never want open score. Well, maybe uh, Brendan Casitas, his trainer, feels that if he tells him that he's losing the fight, that Casitas may go mad and uncontrollable. So he's trying to keep him controlled. He needs to go mad. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody watching this would realize he's not winning. I mean, he's not exactly fighting like a shrinking violet Casitas. 
He's fighting by the standards of a normal fighter, an aggressive fight, but not by his standards. It, it, the way he's fighting at this moment and throughout this fight has lacked desperation. And that's what's made him effect, well, exciting and compelling, if not effective in the past. If this fight does go the complete 12, hey, watch Kinsidi's reaction at the end of the fight. He is going to act as if he won. Easily. Maybe Diaz really hits harder than we think. If, if Kinsidi <laughs> thinks he's winning this fight. Diaz is just a little short with that right. Stop! Step back. Step back. Hang on. Hang on. Diaz again blocks the combination. And then maybe all of that commentary is unfair to Katsidis, who's trying hard and is in against a much better fighter. Uppercut on the inside from Katsidis. Diaz responds with a combination. Katsidis ducks away from danger. They go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Right hand by Diaz with 30 seconds to go in the fight. I tell you, it looks like Diaz hurt him there with a good right hand. He might be called the baby bull, but he's no baby. Juan Diaz coming off that loss against Nate Campbell is dung in deep against a game and tough Michael Katsidis. They'll slug it out right to the end. That's a slip. That's a slip on the logo on the ring mat. And it's over. The Katsidis camp raises him. Diaz takes a climb off the ropes. Willie Savannah with a bear hug for the 24-year-old. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Glenn Hamada scores at 115-113 for Katsidis. Gail Van Oy. 116-112 for Diaz. Levi Martinez scores at 115-113 to the winner by split decision from Houston, Texas. And now, the IBO lightweight champion of the world